The other two are social, economical, and digital inclusion and women's empowerment. And the main levers we use are digitalization and social impact measurement. Our environmental strategy is aligned with the sustainable development goals and the UN principles for responsible banking. And it has three main pillars, a green corporate culture, assessing climate vulnerability, and a green value proposition. It is the environmental, the importance of the environmental dimension in inclusive finance, what brings us all here today. The environmental challenge is enormous and can only be tackled with programs that solve different dimensions, which improve environmental sustainability while helping to raise standards of living for vulnerable families as well as reducing risks. Many people in vulnerability are facing challenges and difficulties as a result of climate threats and their adverse impacts on their communities. We need to design a green microfinance which improves productivity, reduces environmental negative impact and increases clients' resilience. The transition to the green economy must be fair and inclusive. So it is very relevant to understand the present status of green inclusive finance and be able to monitor its evolution, learn from others, find synergies among the different actors. It is key to understand progresses, challenges, and assess what works and what does not work. In order to do this, the green inclusive and climate smart finance action group of the European microfinance platform has gathered data from more than 1,100 green audits of over 800 financial service providers worldwide and has aggregated them using the framework of the green index over almost 10 years. Today, the heads of the action group are going to present for the first time the main find, findings of the analysis of this green audit database. The Green Inclusive and Climate Smart Finance Action Group is a multi-stakeholder think tank that brings together inclusive finance practitioners to discuss, exchange experience, and find a common path in dealing with environmental issues grab green opportunities and create new practical tools to advance green inclusive and climate smart finance. And now I'm going to give the word to the heads of the action group. Natalia Realpe Carrillo, CEO of FEDERA, research fellow at the Institute for Advanced Sustainability Studies and head of the action group. And to Davide Forcella, director of the JUST Institute, associate researcher at the Center for European Research in Microfinance, and the other head of the action group. Davide, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Tula. That was a fantastic introduction. Uh, thanks to everyone for being here. So Natalia and myself are glad uh, to have the opportunity to present you this analysis. Uh, Natalia, next slide, please. So this is what uh, uh, Tula already introduced, uh, who we are, our action group. Um, everyone that is here with us is not part of the action group and feel interesting on what we will show. Uh, please feel free to send us an email. We'll be very happy to welcome you on this unique platform to keep on discussing and constructing uh, ideas together. As today we are more than 150 members representing more than 75 institutions. Next slide. If you're interested to know more, it's the first time you heard about us, please go to this uh, website. You see uh, the link there where you will find a set of uh, interesting tools. Next slide. As for example, the Green Index 3.0, uh, 
that has been recently released. Uh, you will find there uh, the tool, the explanation, and as you will know, is a tool to assess the environmental performance of microfinance institutions and in general financial institutions that provide inclusive finance services is aligned to many international initiatives and is aligned with the recently co-developed Dimension 7 universal standard for social and environmental responsible sorry, performance management done together with SPTF and series. Next slide, please. Uh, you have, uh, we will find there on the online, our website, the digital solution uh, for the Greenness 3.0 that allow you to collect data and receive uh, a reporting of uh, your status uh, developed by EDERA uh, solution, uh, Natalia and uh, its company uh, for the use of the uh, action group and uh, free of use for everyone. In case you want to visit it, please check on this link you will find the same one on the website. Uh, and in case you want to assess your institution or your investor or network want to assess more than one institution, and so contribute to build the database that we are describing you in a moment, please just drop us an email. We can provide for you a dedicated database and we can support you with analysis. Next slide, please. Also, if you're looking for information, we have an online library that will be constantly developing. We are there more than 500 documents uh, of uh, research and gray literature on green inclusive finance organized by topic. So again, it's freely available. Uh, everyone that has a, a publication that does not find there, please just drop an email. We will be happy to include the publication you will refer to. Uh, you want to see best, uh, you want to see best uh, uh, practices, within the sector, please feel free to go to the webinar series, uh, again, clicking on our website, and there you will find all the record of all the videos, included the one of today, plus all the material. We have gathered more than 20 webinars as of now. If you want to train yourself on what Green Inclusive Finance is, we have been released recently a full seven module trainings of around three, 400 slides on various topics of Green Inclusive Finance. It's free of use for everyone. And if you want to be trained or train your people so that we'll be able to train your investees or your staff, again, drop us an email. We provide trainings for trainers or for investors or for investees. So next slide. So with this introduction, um, what are we going to speak today is what to luckily refer is 10 years of green inclusive finance assessment. So um, if you look around, uh, I mean, actually, as we've been looking around and you want to know where the sector is uh, and being able to define uh, what are the main gaps, uh, what are the main priorities for the sector, how the sector has evolved uh, in various countries uh, by legal status, by size of the institution, their performance, what has been working and what has didn't work. This information until recently was not available. Uh, we have some information that was gathered by different parties. So some was for research work already back in 2010-11. Some uh, was from consultancy work uh, starting from 2012, 2007, some previous work in 2013. And then of course, when we developed the first version of the Green Index, uh, we've been working with the series and SPI. So some environmental performance has been filled together with the social performance. Yeah? But all this information has been scattered and uh, you can just come with some anecdotal evidence. What we as action group uh, uh, decided to do, decided to do quite an exercise uh, that is just a second. Uh, what we as an action group decided to do is to, for the first time, put together the knowledge and the data that are available uh, in the sector in a unique database uh, with a aim to uh, provide, uh, you know, knowledge to the sector and then start collecting progressively with the data. So next slide, please. So the motivation is, if you ask what are the drivers in the evolution of inclusive finance, that's key to know. And the step we want to do, as said, is uh, first of all, we want to use the green index as the framework we develop to find the common language, how to put together the knowledge into the sector, and then you know uh, to translate the different available um, data set in unique consistent database, and of course, analyze the trends. So in this webinar, we're going to look exactly the step uh, to this data gathering and structuring. How did we do? What is the result? And ongoing analysis. This, will, this is aimed to provide the basis and the background. And of course, we're going to look for collaboration because this is supposed just to be the beginning. 
Of course, we did that uh, in the past, and now we want to do year by year and in the future. So next slide, please. How did we do it? Uh, so the information has been scattered by, as said, by different parties. We will see the party that uh, has been, uh, you know, happy to share with us the data. Yeah. And so we had to look it around and we have found uh, uh, 13 databases uh, that were existing covering different regions. Someone was just a region data collection, like in Europe, like in Latin America, or in other continents. Someone instead were like transversal worldwide. And so what we did, we took these 13 uh, assess uh, databases where there are environmental assessment. And uh, luckily enough, this environmental assessment uh, were similarly done for various reasons that we can discuss in the question and answer with the green index structure. So together we put together 1,233 environmental assessment covering more than 850 financial service provider and in a time frame of 2011, 2019. Next slide, please. So uh, the interesting part is that the majority of this database has been already checked. We're part of a research work. So there was already cleaning done for this database. There was already consistency check done, as well as uh, uh, there's already used for reporting and publication. So there are like re-elaborated databases, not just raw data, would have been much more complicated. Uh, the people that share with us uh, um, uh, these uh, data are institutions. Some of them are present here. So the Grameen Credit Agricole Foundation, we are very thanks for that. The YAPU solution, they include Palladium, the MFP, the European Microfinance Network and MFC, Mariana Le, that did the first data collection in 2011, the CD, ADA, and of course, the Inter-American Development Bank with the uh, uh, ID Lab. So with that, we received this data, we have anonymized, we have the data anonymized, and then uh, uh, what we are gonna do in the next after future, uh, beyond what we are presenting here, we are gonna prepare a publication that should be online in one month or so. The data visualization and analysis provided by Edera that is here with us. Next slide. Um, the difficult part. So how did we, how will we be able to aggregate certain database? Yeah, first of all, we need to have a common framework. And to do that, we selected the, you know, the most uh, well-known common framework is a green index. And we need to select a version. So the version one was too old and the version two was good enough. The version three was not available yet. So we use the framework of the Green Index 2.0. So not the one that now is just available since a month uh, to aggregate the data. And so we basically organize each one of the database into um, uh, information that are one-to-one -one correspondence with the standard and the essential practice of the Green Index 2.0. Uh, as well as the indicator, and uh, uh, with uh, uh, instead other information that were not exactly the same question as Green Index 2.0, but were similar. So there uh, we had to find proxy. Yeah, we need to transform a question that are not exactly the Green Index 2.0 into a proxy for question of the Green Index 2.0. And sometimes there were holes, we were missing information. So we need to fill it uh, with a statistical analysis. So we did that work, and so we align all the questionnaire along the structure of the Green Index 2.0. So that's a unique structure database. Next slide, please. Um, <clears throat> doing that, this is a summary of the Green Index 2.0, is a bit different from what now we are used to. That was the 3.0. So this report is the last one on this uh, uh, structure. The next one, we will translate all this in the 3.0. So we have one dimension is about environmental strategy. So if institution define, monitor, and put in place his environmental strategy, dimension two is the internal environmental risk. So the institution identify and manage the risk of his ecological footprint, use of paper, energy, transportation, et cetera. The dimension three, the standard three is about uh, uh, the external environmental risk, is about uh, if uh, the activity of the client uh, are uh, affecting the ecosystem or the environment, uh, and how the institution is able to manage those, uh, uh, identify the risk, uh, have better processes and products. And then four is, of course, about green opportunities that include uh, uh, financial and non-financial products and services that the financial institution can offer to their client to support their transition. Next slide, please. Voila. So then uh, we did, while, while we did all that, of course, you could think we did quite some error potentially because we need to aggregate certain uh, databases. And so we need to get the proxy right, et cetera. 
But likely enough, we have two databases to compare uh, these analyses that are not included into our database because unfortunately it was not possible to merge uh, due to various privacy reasons. But so we had access to a similar analysis done by uh, the series on the SPI uh, using the Green Index 1.0 uh, in the period 2014-2016, and then 2.0 in the 2016-2019, where they collected almost uh, uh, 100 uh, environmental assessment, and we have uh, average uh, standard deviation distribution, as well as uh, uh, microfinance rating has been adapting its social ratings to the framework of the Green Index uh, uh, 1.0 and then 2.0 uh, since the very beginning. So it's a both are member of the action group, and so they uh, passed us their analysis of our database, so we will be able to check uh, if our analysis is consistent with their analysis, and they can confirm you that there is a within statistical error, we are pretty good. So that means that our proxy analysis has been done correctly and is representative and extending the knowledge that we have uh, uh, as of now or more than 10 times on other databases. Last but not least, I want to acknowledge, of course, the collaboration we have with Atlas. Uh, through the European Microfinance Platform, they were able to share with us data on the financial and social performance that allow us to do analysis also beyond the environmental performance. Next slide. And with that, after this long introduction, I'm very happy to pass the word to Natalia that is going to tell us what do we find once we are able to aggregate more than 1,000 environmental analysis in the last 10 years. Natalia, the floor is yours. Thank you, Davide, and welcome everyone to our webinar. I'm very happy to see many um, known faces uh, here attending, attending this webinar today. To organize all the results that we have gathered, I will explain to you first what will be the methodology for um, the visualization of these results. First, let's do uh, re not remember about the Green Index Framework. It has four axes of action. First, environmental strategy. Second, the management of internal environmental risks. Third, management of external environmental risk. External is about the clients. Internal, it's about the institution. And the fourth one is about green opportunities. So the first thing that we will see is the results, a summary of the results of the whole of the entire green index. Remember that the results um, institutions can get a zero, 0 0.5, and one. Zero if they don't do the action, 0 0.5 if they do partially, and one point if they do, fully do and implement in their institution. The partially is shady. It can be that they are planning it or they are preparing it or it's in discussion, and, and we will discuss what happens about this partially. Second view that we will see, it's about all this course in each nine of, in all these actions, environmental strategy, internal, environmental risk, external, and the green opportunities. And the last results that we are going to have a look at are the green opportunities, which is um, most relevant on how we will see the trends. For each aspect, we will have a disaggregation per continent, what is happening in each of the region and the trends over time. But now that the methodology is clear, let's start. So first about the sample and the database, we don't have the same amount in all the regions. Um, we have more in Europe and Latin America than Africa and then Asia. The total number of assessments um, is 1,130, with the number of institutions with only one assessment is 866, and with repeated assessments so that they have done it more at least two times, there were institutions that um, they did up to five, the maximum is 112. And as we have said, it is a data collection uh, over time, so from 2011 up to 2019, we have different data sets um, for the different periods of time. Then let's go through the scores distribution. So mean, the mean score um, is similar in all regions. So the average is 20% for the whole sample and high variability. So we see that in Latin America and in Asia, um, we have some very few very let's where is the my 
my mouse. Well, you see that there are some, some institutions that have a very high here, a very high score, which is remarkable. And, um, but in, in every, so these are like, you add these blocks and you see that the sizes of these blocks are, are rather similar. Then let's go per continent, yeah? Let's see in Africa as well, we see it's lower than uh, 0 0.5. We have here in Africa 0 0.25, the mean, and uh, with very few microfinance institutions with very high scores. In Asia, we have more institutions with higher scores and um, with the best performance, 0 0.33. We will see what the score means afterwards. Then in Europe, we have um, uh, not, not that many institutions with a higher score. We have mean in 0 0.27. And um, in Latin America, we have um, mean of 0 0.3 with 333 institutions, also with um, now some considerable amount of institutions with very high score. And when we see now all the distribution, uh, the second step, when we see all the distribution by action, we see here is the mean of the scores, the green index score by region, Africa, Asia, Europe, and Latin America. And this is the benchmark. Um, so some regions below the benchmark, and we will see this will be, and uh, you will see in the visualizations how it works then per, per access of action. So in environmental strategy, we see more um, institutions having uh, an environmental strategy in Latin America. In internal environmental management of internal environmental risks uh, above all in Asia. Then in external environmental risk assessment, the lowest is in Africa. And offerings of green opportunities, um, we see a remarkable, remarkable, uh, remarkable scores for Latin America and Asia. Okay. So um, now that we are on this second overview, let's see what happens. In 2017 and 2019, the previous one was over you know, in uh, along the decade, and now we will see in the last uh, in the last years, we see that there is um, in, like larger scores or higher scores uh, for Asia and Latin America in regards to internal environmental risks. So there is a growth in Latin America of the management of this internal environmental risk. Um, lower in the case of external environmental risk in Latin America and in green opportunities as well. We will see that in overall there is a trend of um, increasing number of green loans offering. Now let's see um, this course distribution pair uh, FSP type, that's the legal status. We have NGOs, non-banking financial institutions, cooperative credit unions, banks, and the, and the benchmark. So we see here from the green index score and then along the axis of action, environmental strategy, internal environmental risk, external environmental risk and green opportunities. And we see that banks have the largest scoring, especially in environmental strategy, but cooperatives have in internal environmental risk and as well in green opportunities. Okay, so here might be that it's about how institutionalized and uh, formal are the organizations and the flexibility they have in the offering of products. Then we have an overall view, and during the discussion, we will see an interactive um, mode of how can we see all like the comparisons between the regions with interactive uh, graphs. But here you will see is um, how can we compare the different, the different scorings across the different regions and how um, the differences between the Asian scorings um, compared to the, to the other ones and how they uh, differ in yeah, in range. And the last one is um, the dimension D, it's offering on green opportunities indicators. 
There here, it's to consider that we are considering the audits that have a valid standard D. And before we have considered, like when we were looking at the whole um, scores A, B, C, D, um, so in all these uh, four axes of action, um, here we are only focusing on the last part of the green opportunities. And we see um, that most of the institutions are offering renewable energy or energy efficiency loans, and also an increase in sustainable or climate smart agriculture loans and rather low other, other green offerings. And in lowest score um, climate or agriculture insurance, and these uh, trainings to clients on green practices, we will see how they correlate also with the offerings of the renewable energy and energy efficiency loans, as well as the climate smart agricultural loans. In this um, green opportunities, so uh, again, this is, this is like the overall, we will see here um, for the different continents, how they differ um, in the different offerings and in Latin America, especially the sustainable or climate smart agricultural loans and uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency loans. Consider as well that um, who, not from where are these data um, being gathered from the different institutions. So well, there are like also organizations that have been working on this thematic with their organizations. And, um, and we see there is a mixed behavior uh, around the different types of offerings, but especially uh, more energy and agriculture that it's valid. And we have seen also from the study from Red Camif that was recently published, how um, it reflects the, the work that was um, gathered on green microfinance in the Caribbean region. Uh, for the case of Latin America. Now the score evolution over time, we have here the audits per year and per region, and then here the number of institutions. So we have that the data has been divided into these three periods and, um, and here we don't have like uniform distribution uh, per region and also not per uh, period. And this has been also taken into account, but we see that the green index scoring um, has, slightly, has slightly decreased over time. And there are no more, um, like in the last period, we don't have um, institutions with higher scorings as before. Yeah, so this might be also due to a finer or a more um, robust assessment. Here we have the overall view, again, um, displaying what were the differences over time from the, like the trends, what were in regards to each of the actions. So before uh, we have in 2011, 2013, it was more focused on external environmental risks, the efforts, and now in 2014 and 2017, it has been rather in internal environmental risks and green opportunities. And then um, we are going to have now an overview of the trends, especially what are the trends in terms of the scoring over time, the trends in green opportunities um, per region, and then the trends in changing um, of scores from, um, from one year to the other. David, would you like to? Yeah, thanks a lot, Natalia. Thanks, thanks a lot. So thanks a lot uh, for, uh, for you being here with us so far. I saw some hands raised and uh, some questions. Please uh, feel free to put a question into the chat. Uh, uh, we are gonna answer all of that uh, in some 10 minutes at the end of the, of the presentation. And we're also gonna give you the floor if you want to speak directly. So as Natalia was saying, it's key to check uh, the trends. Yeah? Uh, I will believe that uh, one would have, would, have, would have expected that the green uh, overall uh, uh, index score would have been increased uh, in the last uh, 10 years. That was also was my uh, idea. Uh, we don't see this grow in this database. Um, first of all, of course, as Natalia was saying, could also be due to the database in different way our data are collected. So we should trust these things partially. And that also this kind of trend is important 
to remark that it is of a key importance to have a centralized and consistent data collection each year to be sure to what we are looking, uh, because it's not where we'll put a lot of resources with uh, not sure of the quality of the result. Nevertheless, I think if you looked into the detail of how the trend goes, we should have an idea of how or why the overall environmental performance represented by the Green Index has not increased, but basically has remained uh, stable. Yeah. So now if you, if you check the different dimension here in different color, you will see that there are basically two that increase and two that decrease. Yeah? So that's an interesting, and we will see when we go into the detail into the green, uh, into the dimension, the, uh, so the green opportunity as well. So you will see that uh, for some reason, let's see the first light uh, uh, green uh, a column that is about environmental strategy. We see a decrease into the uh, score of the environmental strategy. That is honestly a strange trend, but we have been seeing that consistently in different databases and in different legal status and in different uh, um, region. I think it is important uh, to see that that should not go in that direction. That's also mean uh, that we should go in the reverse direction if you really want to push for the transition, because strategy is key, you know, to institutionalize pilots. And now instead, it seems that we have been pushing for strategy at the beginning into the project, etc. Uh, but now the institutions still are not able to put in place a strategy, so we can have doubts on how sound will be the development of green product afterward. So that's a question of warning. Uh, check the data, and if data are like that next year, let's please act. On the other side, you will see a clear increase uh, with a plateau at certain point uh, of the environmental opportunity. Yeah, we started, for, we started, was the lowest score in 2011-2013, so it was around 18%, and uh, we finish uh, in 2017-2019 uh, uh, with uh, 31%. Yeah, we have a plateau between 32.9 and 31.2, that could be due to data. But you see, it's consistently become one of the most important uh, uh, dimension, and it's also the most difficult one. So that's, I think, is very remarkable for uh, the sector. So we've been starting, let's say, easy the first uh, three years. You see, it was the more, less developed one. And then we've been moving on the most complicated thing, that is exactly green product. Just a second, Natalia, sorry. And, uh, and we see it's consistently there. So that is good. It means that we are really thinking to develop product that is the most important things. Uh, into an institution, but then we're looking, we're lacking strategy as said. And instead you see the environmental risk management, you see a mixed trend. So you will see the internal environmental strategy that start as the most important one in 2011-2013, then going down and then ring going up. Yeah, on average is going up. While we see the external environmental strategy that was among the most important one. Remember the beginning of the green inclusive finance we were discussing, do not harm the client. So very much focus on to, onto the risk and then has been decreasing in importance. So the summary is, and that will go much faster in the next slide, that there is a mixed trend that I think is important. And as an actor into this field, we need to understand this mixed trend. First of all, is it correct, this analysis, uh, or we are just an uh, issue of statistic? And if it is correct, what do we learn? Is it really true that we are going more and more into the product and less and less into, you know, into the strategy and uh, uh, environmental risk management? Yeah, then we need to adapt our, our um, it is an opportunity, but the same, we need to adapt our intervention. Next slide, please. Well, as of now, if you looked into the green opportunities, uh, here you clearly, you see what were the driver of the main uh, uh, trends, that is the development of green uh, products. So you see in the light green, uh, uh, light green uh, uh, column uh, is the same thing we've seen before, is, in, is, uh, is increasing uh, and having, being in a plateau. And then you see who are the drivers. So in the first three years, so the first block on the left, clearly the provision of renewable energy and energy efficiency loan was the most important one. Yes, 29%, far beyond, beyond any other kind of product. That's very consistent. And then it's been increasing, still remaining the most important one, 35%, 37%, and the other three, in the other two uh, uh, group of three years. Yeah. So that's a clear trend. So they are still are the most important product and they are growing. Now, if you go back, uh, the other trend that very important to see is sustainable agriculture. So sustainable agriculture and climate smart agriculture and basically being, I mean, after the climate insurance that is, was scoring zero in 2011-2013 has been the lowest score. And then instead we see a trend, a consistently growing trends in the, in the years 
basically reaching uh, the same value of renewable energy and energy efficiency. That I think is very much justifiable also on project to project that we see, and also be the change of perspective we've been seeing uh, into green inclusive finance. That is not just uh, let's avoid that we produce pollution and CO2, but also let's put in place practices that reduce uh, the uh, vulnerability of the client to climate change and produce food, uh, etc. And then last but not least, I think, uh, I think an important remark is that uh, um, uh, climate insurance is still the weakest one, has been consistently been the weakest one, even if a lot of uh, uh, effort has been put there. So you see is the, is the gray uh, column. And the trend uh, and the worrying trend, uh, I think is about the non-financial services. So is that violet one? This is consistent through various regions. So the training to, uh, to client on green practices has been uh, starting uh, as uh, the second most important practices in the, the beginning, 2011, 2013, then has been increasing. And then in the last period has been uh, decreasing quite a lot. Uh, again, to look at it, because we need to build capacity to support sustainable development. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, super. This we see an example for Latin America. So you see a similar trend. Uh, Latin America clearly started uh, uh, with high renewable energy efficiency. And then slowly in Latin America, we see a change. Uh, and I think uh, uh, Tula clearly can comment because uh, the Fundación BBVA is uh, there in Latin America. There has been a switch between the importance of renewable energy and efficiency and sustainable agriculture. We will see different in different regions. Reasonably, uh, the grid is much more connected there than like in Africa and the country is very much exposed uh, to various uh, climatic threats. Next slide. Uh, in Europe, that's it, Europe. You see Europe is a different trend. Uh, so this data uh, we will uh, uh, be able to collect thanks to the collaboration we have with the European Microfinance Network and the European Microfinance Center. Uh, you see has been stably renewable energy and specifically energy efficiency as the main product finance in, in Europe and has been growing not too fast, but constantly and still remain the most important uh, product. Next slide. So you see different trends. This, back to you, Natalia, if you can tell us a bit uh, about these yeah. graphics. Yeah, um, also about the training, it can be also as well that um, the institutions consider that the clients have been already trained. There is already acceptance of the products and perhaps there is not that focus on the training clients, but here now a call for in the impact investors and technical assistance, there is still needs for training for financial institutions and also for clients. Here we wanted to show you, um, we take the institutions that have more than one audit and compare the increase or decrease. So this is uh, already answering one of the questions from Professor Castellani. Um, so we, we have, as, as we said before, there are 112 institutions that have repeated assessment and green is um, increase and uh, red is decrease. So now what, what is happening with, it, uh, with their audits? Uh, have they kept the same? And this is what we see here in regards to um, their scores. So we, now, uh, what, what will you say? Now here we have an increase of 50, decrease of 59. No, so it's half half. Now we we could um, further explore where do they come from, what is exactly in which of the axis of action have they decreased their action. But at least we see that there is a it's not that everybody has stayed the same, but it's like similar proportions. Then um then we have sorry. So now uh, FSPs with the multiple evaluations. And then here on the green opportunities, there is a decrease of 60, but an increase overall of um, 86. So there is more um, of the institutions that have, have, have done this assessment twice. They have increased in their scoring. We could say that also the tool or the, the, the fact that they are being measured it gives in, incentivize them to follow up their activities and that it's good for them to keep track of their actions and that they um, um, that they see as well um, how they can monitor and do more in each of the axis of action. 
And then in pair region, we see in Latin America, for instance, there is a decrease of 13, so very little, but an increase in, of 27 uh, in regards to green opportunities, as we saw uh, from, not from the last uh, slides that David was presenting, there is an increase in renewable energy and energy efficiency, but as well on sustainable agriculture and climate smart practices. And the last um, analysis on the on these course to conclude this um, analysis, let's have a look to the correlations. And I think this is very interesting, which um, gives us the food that has also fed them the development of the Green Index 3.0. So if you explore the tool, the Green Index 2.0 that you can download from the EMFP website slash no, or the um, action group, website slash green index, then you can have access to the PDF on the green index 2.0. You see here, what are the, the questions for action? And here we see, for instance, the first one, um, 7A11, uh, 7A21 and 7A22. So the institution has a person and the institution reports. So we see that those who have a person usually report. Then uh, it means it's good to have one, person and then it, of the, um, obviously this person or not obviously but usually this person will or team will report on their activities therefore um, in the detailed assessment of the green index 3.0 we are asking uh, how is the positions or how is the team composition and what is the type of reporting that they are doing in order to report on the outcomes then we see the next uh, correlation the C21, so in, in the environmental, in the um, internal, sorry, external environmental risk assessment. C21 refers to the institution categorizes loan applications according to the level of environmental risk and applies specific procedures according to each risk category. Those institutions that do, that, that have or that uh, implement this action show that they have established an um, environmental strategy that um, they are managing their internal risk as well. They are managing their external environmental risk and they are more prone to deliver um, green loans. So this could be for technical assistance and for environmental, um, for in impact investors supporting green microfinance in, with their FSPs, this could be a way not the first entrance. And then the last um, uh, correlations interesting that we see is between the um, D1121, uh, which we say, you know, those institutions that are offering the different types of products, they are also offering trainings. How far, um, how should they develop this non-financial product will depend on so also how they consider how mature are their offerings. And if there is already an acceptance of the loan, perhaps that's why there is a decrease in the action, but could not signalize um, what is the performance for the overall sector. So what does the score mean? See, this option partially might be misleading because as you see here, this is the, um, now this is the score partially, it's a 0 0.5. And in practice it's giving, now it, now it can give recommendations, but um, this um, flexibility to differentiate the multiple levels between yes and no, it's important. However, we have to be more specific. For instance, let's see the differences. So in Africa we have yes, no? so that means that this course does not mean that this is the amount of institutions um, doing this type of action. Uh, for instance, in Africa, this is 20% of the institutions are offering renewable energy loans. And partially, well, perhaps they are thinking about it or discussing with suppliers or in the process of developing. And then it leads, um, no, it leads to, uh, to a different score from what we see before. Okay, I want to show you here the different the different, um, so you see here, here is the mean 0 0.38, and actually it's only 19. So that's 
that's a big difference. And that's for all the regions is the same. You see the differences between the yes and the mean, yeah? And then the last one, uh, we, have, uh, we have different um, conclusions, but uh, we didn't want to focus only on the results, but also on the messages that we should uh, discuss largely with the whole, with the whole sector. And um, here we have two first, um, two first ideas you know, that it's important to increase. You know, we see an increasing commitment on protecting the environment from the financial service providers. And also we see based on this work that we have done with the databases and the different results, there is a need to adapt the tools and also the taxonomies due to these evolving trends that we see. And Davide, uh, based on the discussions that he has had in, in Glasgow, wanted to share with you as well more insights just to finalize. Okay, thanks a lot, Natalia. So just a couple of minutes of your attention uh, still, and then uh, we go to the question and, and answer. So if someone of you have been lost, you know, we've been so uh, lucky to have all this data and this analysis, I, I want just to summarize a couple of main uh, uh, point uh, one i think uh, um, thanks to all the members of the action group and partner we have been able to build for the first time a database i think the Grenindas has been i mean found as a very good framework to aggregate different databases and be able for the first time to look the evolution of the of the sector that kind of analysis was impossible to be done before so with all the things that we know we need to be careful, maybe there is inconsistency among databases, et cetera. That's the first time we can look in face what happened in the last 10 years. I think uh, this is just the beginning of a very long journey that will allow the systematization of our understanding of green inclusive finance. Surprisingly, we have been found a mix of trends. I think that's really, I would like to communicate uh, with everyone. Eh? I also think, thanks Davide, Davide Castellani that was asking that question. One could have been thought uh, that the one that has been started practice uh, 10 years ago would have been kept this practice and then eventually stay stable or improving. Yeah, We don't see that. There is a mixed trend. So there are activities like environmental strategy have been started high and then decreasing, as well as external environmental risk have been started high and decreasing. A rather standard instead, the internal environmental risk management, and in particular, the opportunities of financial non-financial product has been instead increasing. So you see the result of a more or less stable a green index is the result of the mix of trends of how the standard went, the score of the standard went in the last, uh, in the last years. I think it's important that we need to investigate that further, but I think uh, uh, in particular with the new regulation and standard you know, and initiative that has been really skyrocketing in the last three, four years that are not included into this analysis and I just stopped 2019. But I also think we need to have a reflection. It seems that what you observe is a bit the footprint of a pilot by pilot approach, yeah, without having really a consistent approach of how to develop this market. Uh, I think we cannot do that anymore. So we start a project after three years, we see, okay, that's finished and let's see. And we do not capitalize on that. And then, and then institutions are a bit left to keep on doing that somehow and certain do very well. We have fantastic institutions who do a fantastic job and other, of course, are affected by other duties. I want to add other couple of things. Despite the mix of trend that we have been observed, I want to remark uh, that the offer of financial green product and services has increased between 2011-2019 in all continent assessed. Africa, Asia, Latin America and Europe has improved their offer. So this is consistently positive trend. There are more institutions providing green loans today, of course, 2019, but I'm sure today we will discover this year and next year compared to 10 years ago. Also, that is also true by all legal status. Banks, non-banks, financial institutions, NGOs and cooperatives has been increased their engagement into green products. So that's good. We have been seeing that there are various trends. While in Europe, uh, like the renewable energy efficiency is the most important one is today. In Asia, Africa, Latin America and Caribbean, the provision of uh, loans for what we call today nature-based solution or sustainable agriculture, it is increasing in importance. The trends have been observed, I think is worrisome, is about non-financial services that has been decreased that we need to look more in detail. Next slide, and we have the, the outlook. So what do we aim to do here in the, in, the, in the action group? We have developed, as you know, the Green Industry 3.0. I'm not gonna retell you for the 10th or 20th time of what it is and how it is. 
but is a bit more elaborated uh, tool. Okay? So our duty now, next slide, is to do one thing. First of all, you will have a publication coming out of this analysis we have just presented you. Yeah? That should happen as I put quarter three as correct of 2022. So you will have a publication dedicated to that so you can read and go through. We'll be establishing a database yeah, for this. We will exploit them to understand the trend and the benchmark. But to be able to do, we have a duty to do here in the action group is to do the mapping now between the Grenindes 2.0 to the 3.0, because from uh, since two, three months ago, we are only collecting data in the framework of the Green Index 3.0. And as well as you know, the Dimension 7 could develop with the SPTF and the series is along now the framework of the Dimension of the Green Index 3.0, as well uh, as uh, that will be what is in, will be included in the universal standard for social and environmental performance management. So we'll have a new way to collect the data so we need to ensure this alignment that we're going to do in the action group to, to still use this 1,000 plus uh, assessment to, um, to, to, to develop benchmark and trends. And then we need to start something, and this is really a call for action, because we now need, for the first time, start a systematic data collection that year by year on the basic Greenest 3.0. We can start small and increasing it. Uh, because uh, we already started uh, within the action group. Uh, we've been doing a first assessment thanks to collaboration with, uh, with Finance in Motion uh, and with other institutions uh, to collect this data because there we really want to have in a consistent data collection, co data collection every year and have a report every year to monitor how the sector is going and have an open base uh, uh, database, of course, anonymized where people can look into that and see what is happening. Uh, this is a call for action. If here we are present any network of investors, they want to contribute with us uh, to collect data from their investees, please collect us. We need your support. It's a lot of work, but we can do systematically thanks to digital tool provided by EDERA to the action group. We can collect this data very efficiently. So what we want to do, we want then also, the last thing we want to do, we also know that this, uh, the dimension seven would be included into, is included already in the universal standard, the new one, it will be included in SPI, and data will also be shared with Atlas. So we are developing a, um, a policy where we'll be able to share data at the level of dimension seven within the various actors so that we will avoid and now that two, three databases developing main one, and then we cannot aggregate analysis. We are into that. That should be live in the next months. And the aim is to publish an yearly report. And so we need the support of everyone. Next slide, I think we're finished. Hopefully. Voila. So Tula is back to you. You need to manage us. Uh, and, the, the, and, and we have some questions. Yeah. Yes, we have received some questions. Uh, one is regarding if you have considered the Middle East and North Africa region. Yes, I take it immediately. I was answering by, by message, but I think maybe it was private. And yes, we have considered the Middle East, uh, uh, so the MENA region. Uh, we have been aggregating them uh, uh, into Africa and into Asia. Yeah, so basically separating the two. We had previous analysis specific for MENA. I think if someone is interested, we can find it out. Uh, but the number of institutions was not too many. So the statistical value of trends were a bit doubtful. Yeah, but we have it. Yeah. We have a, another question that is how to motivate to to the, the microfinance industry to improve uh, the green finance. And I think you ha have partially uh, answer to this, but maybe you can add something. Well, I um, think how, how to boost. So what we have seen in the trends is uh, those institutions that are um, classifying or identifying what are the risks and with exclusion list or with other tools and what are the environmental risks of their clients. No, it seems that they also perform better and that they have um, that they do implement further actions on the on the different levels. We see also that uh, it's not that the same recipe works for all institutions. Now in Europe, there is um, further needs in energy efficiency. So institutions focus, focus rather on this um, on, on these offerings, while in other regions it's rather agriculture. And 
as I have seen from the sector where I work, that it's um, energy, renewable energy linking to macrofinance. And uh, we have seen also a development of uh, offerings, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, but as well offerings from uh, energy suppliers, as well offering um, financing methods for the clients. So it might, it depends on the region in, in Latin America, those institutions that are partnering uh, renewable energy suppliers, they are still developing products as in the classical two-hand mold, uh, two hand model, two hands model, but in Africa with pay as you go or with um, or with the renewable energy suppliers already providing financing themselves, then institutions might think about other partnerships. But above all, what we see is that um, not in this environmental strategy, and as David has said, the role of um, investors of technical assistance of um, us as action group uh, bringing or promoting the topic and uh, gathering in each webinar, not even more participants, publishing resources, communicating about the trends. We now I have seen in this in this semester our members participating in webinars, showing their work, participating in different events, having different organizations from regulators as well as from networks that are working on this thematic is not anymore something, something totally innovative, but rather um, a trend and something that must, well, everybody uh, has a role in climate change adaptation and mitigation. So yeah, it depends on the institution, but there is lots of work to do. Yes, we, we are receiving questions as well regarding how to join the action group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have shared the in the last slide. Let's see, here is the email from uh, Joana Afonso and as well from our side. Uh, you can write us an email or you can reply to the invitation if you have received a special invitation and you can um, then contact and uh, tell about tell us about your organization and interest and and join the action group. Okay. Do we have any other questions? So if not, we can close here. Thank you very much, all of you, for attending this this webinar. Mm -hmm. And which will be, uh, which is recorded in, and it will be available at the action group site that has been shared in the in the chat. The address. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Tula, and thank you very much to all for your participation and questions. Thanks a lot. We look forward for the next step together. Uh, thank you for your feedback, Andrew, Dennis, Halumba. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, participants from many countries around the world.